Peace and love, fam. Welcome back to the channel. It's your boy Monte. You know who I am. You know what I do. You know how I get that. We're going to get into this one real quick, guys. I want to keep it under five minutes. We're going to be dealing with the top three reasons why you and I are not coping with life effectively and or efficiently, guys. We're going to break that down. But before we break that down, I'd like to thank those of you who are new to the channel. Thank you for coming aboard. Hopefully, if you like what it is that I'm delivering, hopefully you'll subscribe and give me a thumbs up and even share the video if you like the information. Those of you who've been riding with me, you know what it is. You know I'm appreciative of you. Leave your comments in the bottom and we'll chop it up, all right, guys? All right, now, let's break down what it is we wanna talk about today. Also, let me give you a tip for the day, guys. Remember, guys, if you want to um, experience optimal health, guys, you wanna engage in proper nutrition, you wanna engage in fasting, you wanna engage in getting uh, and reducing your stress, meditation, prayer. You wanna engage in exercise, whatever exercise that you can do. Now walking is great exercise for the brain, guys. So if you're not walking, you definitely wanna walk if you can walk, and most of us can walk, guys. 60 minutes would be great daily. If you can only get in 30, that's good as well. Now let's get down to what it is we wanna talk about. All right, we're talking about emotional intelligence. We're dealing with mental acuteness and physical fitness. These are the three reasons why we are not dealing with life effectively. And I'm explaining the negative effects that, is that are causing us not to be able to do it. And then I'm going to point out the positive things that we can do on each one in order to get us back to balance, in order to allow us to deal with life effectively. All right. Emotional intelligence, guys. I'm pretty sure many of you are familiar with that terminology, emotional intelligence means to me, means that you have the ability to step back from the emotion and deal with things in a reasonable manner, no matter what that thing is, all right? So, here are some things that negatively affect our ability to become emotionally intelligent. We hide in anxiety. We are in a lot of stress. We're fearful individuals. We may be jealous envy, greed, may be overly competitive to our detriment, and we may become a fanaticist, or we may practice fanaticism. I may have spelled that wrong. Now, the way to increase our emotional intelligence would be to be still, practice stillness, meaning to take time to step back, to actually meditate, to pray, to do those things that are gonna allow you to step away from the on energy that's surrounding you every day when you're in the modern society, guys. So step back, step away, get out into nature. Connect with nature, become aware, meaning be aware of what it is that you are wanting to do and be aware of what it is that you've been taught that is not the truth, all right? Inquisitiveness, that's the same thing. Always question. Question everything that you did not come up with yourself. And even question yourself as to why you came up with that. Open-minded, meaning to be open to hear others. That doesn't mean you have to agree. That doesn't mean you have to buy, uh, uh, dive into what it is that everybody puts out there and say, oh, that's okay. No, you can have your uh, boundaries, but have an open mind at least. Listen. Patience. Be patient knowledge grab knowledge make sure you grab a knowledge that is useful make sure you grab a knowledge that is uh truth all right and wisdom that's the ability to apply that which you have gained when it comes to knowledge patience open-mindedness awareness inquisit inquisitiveness connected to nature and stillness be able to put that into practice requires wisdom mental acuteness you want proper nutrition, you want exercise, meditation, prayer, conditioning. Conditioning meaning you want to condition yourself in a way that you're uh, learning in and of yourself, not just by what you've been taught and conditioned outside of what it is that you are now starting to experience and put into uh, the uh, understanding that you need, all right? 
let's go reading. I think we should read. Again, there are certain things out there that, that may be misleading, but the more you come in contact with, the more if you are mentally acute, you'll be able to sparse uh, or pair apart those things that are not working for you. Walking, walking really increases the brain. It really adds to what they call neurogenesis, the renewing of brain cells. Things to avoid medication, over-the-counter medication. Television, too much television, unless you're watching those things that are educational. You don't want to just be down, down by the television. Drugs, worry, um, all those things that are cannot uh, tied to that. Those only a few, all right? Now, physical fitness, guys. Nutrition plays a big role. You want to be movement. You want to get into movement. You want aerobic exercise. That's more of the walking or the jogging, if you can. I don't really recommend jogging, but if you like to jog, it does stimulate the brain. Um, anaerobic exercise are those exercises where you become out of breath quickly, and if you can do that, that works well. And resistance training, guys, meaning lifting weights. If you can lift weights, or if you can only, or if you can lift your body weight, that works as well. You want to avoid being sedentary. Uh, may have spelled that wrong as well. You want to uh, avoid poor nutrition, and you don't want to overexercise as well. There are many more on this end that we can touch on, but I just wanted to drop that in on you. Again, leave me comments in uh, down below. I went over a little bit more than what I wanted to, but I'm sending you peace and love, guys. Peace and love. Peace.